you a fan of this podcast? Do you wish there was even more juicy content for you to sink your ears into? Well, there is. You can become a premium member of this podcast for $5.99 a month and get full access to an archive of over 50 bonus episodes. Additionally, we release a bonus episode every single month. That's a ton of extra content, including my personal interior design diaries, extra tips, my talking about trends, and so much more. Additionally, you'll be keeping us on the airwaves each and every week because your premium membership money goes directly back to making this podcast amazing. Check us out at affordableinteriordesign.com, click on podcast to learn more and to become a premium member today. high-end designer or a lot of money to get a luxe look be your own interior designer this is affordable interior design the podcast here's your host betsy hellman hi everybody i am so excited to be back with you again this week i have a special guest and one really exciting thing about this special guest is i don't know him all that well I'm welcoming Kim White today, and we are both in a business class called Strategic Coach, and we had a little session the other day, and during our breakout room, we just connected, and there was so much synergy, so I said, let's let's hang out. What better way to hang out than on my podcast? <laughs> Is that a cry for help when I can only socialize on my podcast? Well, I'm excited to create a connection with Kim White today to hear more about who he is and what he does, because he has a lot of valuable insights to share with you guys. And uh, so welcome to the show, Kim. Thanks, Bill. I'm really excited to be here. This is awesome. I I instantly felt a good connection when I met you as well. I thought, wow, this is awesome to work with Betsy. So. Yes. Well, we were on Zoom taking this class through this business organization, and he mentioned something about space clearing. And even though as interior designers, we mostly space fill, we don't space empty. I have long felt as working with different clients in different energetic spaces, whether they're getting a divorce, going through a breakup, welcoming a new child, you know, they call us at these milestones and there's more going on in their space than just furniture. There's energy. So Kim, tell us a little bit about yourself, who you are, what you do. So I've been doing space clearing for 27 years since I started my business. Uh, The reason I started was I was an athlete before this and I was training for the Olympics And everything was so regimented in my training that the only variable was where I slept the night before I raced, like which hotel room or which place. And I was starting to notice that different environments would affect my performance, which really kind of pissed me off a bit. Why should that happen? I should be stronger than that. And so I started to to explore that of how our environment can affect us and our performance and how it affects our mind, our body, our emotions and so forth. And then I found I had a knack for this. I thought I'd try it for a year and that was 27 years ago. So, and I just love it. I travel all over the world clearing uh, from small one bedroom apartments up to huge castles in Europe and uh, in 40 different countries. And I just love seeing the transformation of the spaces and it's instant. Like within 10 minutes, the people are saying, wow, what my place is different already. So just like you were saying about that feeling, uh, 95% of the problem is past tenants or mm. past wisdom of the land. It doesn't have to be anything to do with the people that are living there now. Like I'll give you one quick story. I had one client that called me uh, because they were having marital problems and so I went to the house and they said, the reason we called you is because when we're outside of the house, we're fine. We love each other. We're happy. But as soon as we come home, we start fighting. So we, so I went in and as soon as I walked in the house, all I felt was separation. And I said, are you guys sleeping in different rooms? And they said, no. But the energy was that dramatic that it was causing a split in the relationship. So I cleared the energy of the house. And then after about 10 minutes, they started to feel more and more relaxed in their body. And then by the time I finished a couple of hours later, 
they were like, wow, they could feel the love between each other again. And it was on. like, hold on, hold on. Can we take it two steps back? Sure. So you walk in the space and you feel a separation. Now, is it something that you innately feel? Is there a tool that you use? Like, how could you sense what was going on? Because, you know, people might be interested in this from a DIY perspective, but maybe they're feeling called to do this. So tell me more about how you sense it. So that's my unique ability mm -hmm. is to feel people, spaces, places. And then I've, you know, when I, I, I'm very spiritual, I'd always pray to God and ask, well, how can I use this to help people? Originally, I thought it was an, a weakness, you know, growing up in Australia, it was like, oh, go at, guys aren't sensitive, you know, you're a wimp or wuss or whatever. And so I always thought it was a negative. And then I changed my attitude around it. And suddenly I thought, what if this is a strength? And that was about 30 years ago. And as soon as I changed my attitude, my whole life turned around. And so it's a natural gift I have that I've had my whole life. But then I said, so, well, okay, God, what do I do with this? You know, how can I help people? And so then I had to learn ways. Just because I feel something, I'm not going to, like one thing that really um, upset me was I'd watch these shows in Hollywood where the people would go into these houses and they'd tell them about all the ghosts and how haunted the house was and then they'd leave and they'd leave the poor people living there with all this mess. I was like, yeah, how can you do that, right? So I was like, no, we have to clean it all out, make it a beautiful home so they feel happy and their joy is there. Uh, so I would learn and study and I'm always improving. How can I get better? How can I improve? And so I, I just went on this journey to, to get the best results for my clients. And I've had interior designers call me when they knew, how, they know how good they are, but there's just something that they can feel in the place that isn't right. Or I've had, when I was working in Asia, all the Feng Shui masters used to call me because they would do their work, but they still knew something was wrong. And so they would call me in for those jobs. And then, um, so, so my unique ability is sensing where there's a blockage, where there's a problem, or, or there's a ghost. Like sometimes I'll enter a house and instantly I'm getting hit on the back or on the head by a spirit. I'm like, oh. Now, do you feel like because you're sensitive, the ghosts maybe target you more? Like maybe you would sense a ghost more than somebody else? Yes. Although everyone has their intuition. So ha depending how much you listen to your intuition, listen to your feelings. I mean, you just walk into a space. If you're, if you're aware that your muscles clench or your heart closes, you know there's something in the space because when you're outside, it was fine. And so you and say, so, well, there's something going on in this space. What is it? Now, it could be something in the present, like there could be an object in the room that's putting off an energy that you're reacting to. Or it could be something from the past, which is just sitting in the space. Just like dust will collect in a corner, energy collects in spaces. So, so, you know, I live in an area and work in an area. I work in New York City, but mm -hmm. then I live in the suburbs and everything around here is old. I mean, not London old, which is where you are right now, but United States old, right? Mm -hmm. There's pre-war buildings, but there's just been lots of movement, you know, when I lived in New York City, I moved every year, every 12 months. And I was moving into a space that hundreds, if not thousands of people had lived before. Do you find that spaces that are older have more issues than, say, a new build? Because you mentioned it's the previous tenants. So because I often find that I connect much more with older spaces, like I'm actually currently looking for a new home and I don't want to do anything that was built after 1940, I connect with older spaces. Um, but maybe newer spaces have a fresher blank slate, if you will. Not, not necessarily. Because Tell me about that. So, for example, I did this real estate office once, and the, it was a brand-new building. It was beautiful. And they, they said, well, the problem is we keep having fender benders in the car park, and it's always in the same spot. So they called me in. Anyway, I did the clearing, and I felt there was an energetic hole going in this area where the, where the car park was. And what we did, we found out later that there was a, it was an old farm that used to be there years before and there was a well there. And even though they filled the well in, the energy was still there of a hole. And so 
people would be backing up and they would it's almost like you don't see because you feel your body tense up mm-hmm. and then you hit somebody or, or there's some some something can happen so it can be old as well it doesn't have to be new i remember i did a one house and they it was a beautiful brand new house and i went in i said there's something wrong with the sand under the building and they said how did you know we had that sand bought in to lift the level of the building so it was brought in from another area that was contaminated and so i had to do an like energetic clearing to shift the energy and as soon as i did it the people relaxed so it was, even the sand carried the energy to a new location it was wow. so, so it can be something doesn't have to be if it's new or old you can have a like i've walked into beautiful old buildings and i feel completely free and beautiful and other ones i don't even want to go in the door you know right. so it just you've got to really listen to your feelings and that's why i teach people and this is important for your listeners is to not look with your eyes but look with your heart and i'll, I'll give you an example which was which was i say tragic I had a lady who was dying of cancer and she asked me, can you help me with my home? So I came to her home. She was living alone, beautifully furnished, but all the furniture came from one island, which is very, they have a lot of uh, rituals around spirits and every piece of furniture had spirits attached. So it was like the house was full, but there was no one there, just her. So what happened was her body was totally in this fight or flight syndrome all the time, thinking she's alone, and yet her body's knowing there's other spirits around. And so her immune system was just completely exhausted. And that's how she got sick. Wow. Uh, so the furniture she bought with her eyes because it was fashionable. She right. wasn't feel if she listened to her heart or her body, her body would have felt tense, as I did. As soon as I walked in the house, it was like, oh my God, this is like crazy. Beautiful looking furniture, but there was other things attached to it. So if you're going to buy from, say, a consignment shop or something like that, like I remember I was looking for a wedding ring and I wanted something very special because, you know, it's going to be my wedding ring. So I thought, well, I really like older styles. The new styles don't really appeal to me. Let me go to a jeweler and just see what they have on consignment or or what people have brought in because I really want that look. But then I worried about that energy. Like what happened to that relationship that the ring is out of circulation? So do you warn people against buying secondhand or? No. Uh, if Again, if you're following your heart, it you will know if it feels good or not. List, not with your eyes, but with your, you're obviously using your eyes because you want something that looks good, but you also want to check it with your heart. So you bring it up to your heart. And if your heart goes like that, you know, it's not for you. If your heart is like that, you know, it's good. And I used to have clients that come. You physically take that object, it sounds like. You bring yeah. it up. You hold yeah. it in your hand and you can bring it to your chest. I mean, if you're really good with your intuition, you'll just sense it immediately. Oh, no, that's not for me. You just you don't even have to pick it up. You just feel it. And then others, you go, well, it feels fine. I pick it up and I feel, oh, I feel nothing. There's nothing. I feel free. So then when you might try it on, it might be a different story. And I'll, I'll give you an example. I had a client, she was coming because she was really sick, constantly sick, and the doctors couldn't help her. And so her and her husband came, and I I was preparing for my work, and I'm praying and asking God, how can I help? And God said, take off the wedding ring. I'm like, what? Okay, so I asked her to remove her wedding ring, and instantly she felt better. And I said, now put it back on. She put it back on, she felt sick again. It was her husband's energy because of the wedding band, the connection he, she was feeling his pain that he was fighting through and carrying it because they're married. So I ended up doing the session on the husband and the problem went away. Mm. So It was just so linked to her. Because of the wedding vows and everything, the ring really binds two people together. So, so if you get something, even if it's a new ring and you want to make sure it's clean, there's a simple thing you can do is you could, as long as the material is okay, soak it overnight in salt water, like lots of Epsom salt and water, just to clean the energy. If it's just energy, check with your heart. If it feels good with your heart, it just needs a bit of freshening up. Do that. Um, then also, you know, they have the electronic um, jewelry cleaners. Mm. That you make. 
the vibration, that's good as well. And maybe put a little salt in there just to help to really loosen any energy up. And this this helps a lot. And another thing is you can take a bowl or a plate with some dry salt, like sea salt, and just lay it overnight, and that will also help to absorb the uh, salt. Best cleaner on the planet. Really? I mean, how do you feel when you get in the ocean and you get out, you just feel so invigorated and so free. Yeah. Um, same with uh, Epsom salt baths. You know, you have a bath and you just, because it's removing all that energy from your energy field and cleaning. But here is a question I have. All right. Does it matter where you buy the salt? Because, so I had this client years ago, back when I first started, I walked in his space. I do consider myself somewhat intuitive, but you know, it's not something I bring to my normal visits, right? Because it's not why people are calling me. Yep. I could not escape it with this client. I said, you know, we can't do one little thing until we clear the energy in here. And I've never said that before to any of my clients, but I need to say that to you because I can't even see, right? You know, it's so thick in here. There's so much going on. So I got a smudge stick on Amazon. Does it matter where you get your tools, right? Yes. Like, do you need to buy your salt at a certain spot or can I get it from Stop and Shop? Like, If, uh, like Walgreens or something for your salt, yeah. fine, you know, uh, just ask God, where can I get my salt? And you will be in, your intuition will guide you where to go. Just keep it, keep it clean. When you're doing like smudge sticks or incense sticks, it's really important that you listen to your intuition because some of the manufacturers put spells into the incense and that's and then you become addicted to it. Instead of using it as a tool to help you, it becomes where you have to keep buying more and more and more oh. so they can get more sales. So this is not, not good. So really if you, if you don't feel good when you're holding it, don't buy it. And now it's time for a quick commercial break. Do you love this podcast? Do you wish you could learn even more? Well, we have an online class bundle. Our online class bundle is comprised of three online classes, Beautifying Your Home for Less, Styling Your Home, and The Fundamentals of Feng Shui. Each one of those three classes is between 30 and 45 minutes long and chock filled with visuals and tips things that will help you to style your own space or help out with other spaces. Additionally, with the pack of three classes, you get an autographed copy of my book, Affordable Interior Design. You get all of that for only $99. Once again, that's the three online classes as well as the book for only $99. You just go to affordableinteriordesign.com slash classes. Once again, affordableinteriordesign.com slash classes to buy your bundle today. And if one of those classes sounded intriguing, but maybe you already have my book or some of the other topics are not of interest, you can buy the classes individually at that site as well. Each class is $40. So head over to affordableinteriordesign.com slash classes to get your bundle or your online class today. You know, I feel I do have pretty good intuition. I feel I have seen a couple of ghosts, Kim. Um, I, yeah, I really do. And, uh, my husband is not a believer at all, but he believes me. We had a cat in our last apartment. Uh, we didn't have a cat, but there was a cat ghost cat lived there and I would see her all the time hanging out. And so one day I just got up the nerve to ask my neighbor. I said, was there ever a cat? You know, I just keep seeing something. And my neighbor was like, oh yeah, they had a cat for many years who died. Well, and I'm like, did it? die in the space. And they're like, oh yeah, you know, they were so sad. We like talked about it, used to wander the halls. It still wanders the halls. Um, so I feel a little bit like I'm tapped in, but I bet a lot of our listeners, including maybe my husband, do not feel tapped in. You said all of us have it. Yes. How can we access that when we're buying salt at Walgreens and holding it? You know, how can we tap in? Well, if you're buying it at Walgreens, you, you should be fine. All right. So, um, <laughs> The thing is, if you don't have it, like a, a, a lot of guys that don't have a, a connection to the intuition, the way I work with them is to say, how is your mind in the space? Is it busy or is it quiet? Because they'll know their mind. They know mm. if their mind is racing or it's calmed down. Because when I do a clearing on a space or on a person, instantly the mind is empty. It, t it takes away all the, the stress. Most of the time the stress comes from 
our environment, our body goes into a fight or flight syndrome to protect ourselves. And so your mind starts racing to, to get out of the situation. So if someone is not in touch with their intuition, then they can listen to how their mind is going. Is it going fast or is it relaxed or is it just normal? Or they listen to how their muscles are. Are the muscles clenching or relaxing? That's a good way. When they move into a space, is it getting tight or is it getting loose? And that'll be a good indication for you. Even an empty space, you walk in there and you just start seizing up because there's something there mm. that is not, uh, not, not friendly to you. I am going to practice this as I'm house shopping because I'm going into a lot of houses. I mean, I go into a lot of houses just day to day in my career. But um, sometimes when it's more personal to you, I think you can better check in. It's so important. And I would work with uh, couples who are real estate developers or real estate um, that would be their side business. And I'd always, the, the husband would do the numbers and the wife would feel. So he'd bring five great prospects to her. She'd look at all the houses and she'd say, not this one, this one looks okay, let's go and visit it. Because she could feel it. Her intuition was guiding it. And then they go in and if she felt good and he felt the numbers are good, they always won. But when they didn't talk, when the husband was too arrogant or whatever, then they always failed. They always had problems. They had maintenance problems or things went wrong because they didn't use both gifts, the mind and the heart. So it's so important. Interesting. Well, and, you know, what if you've done your test, right? So you're in the space. Oh my gosh, I have this really loud, I, I record right here on Main Street in my storefront, which is very old, by the way. And now I'm wondering how I feel inside it. Um, but there's this very loud working truck beeping. So sorry if you're hearing that. That's just one of the the joys of, Joy. yeah, of a small business working in a storefront here on Main Street. But, you know, say you've done your tests, right? You walk into your house or say I walk into my storefront and I realize my muscles are clenched. I realize my mind is frantic. What can just the lay person do, right? Of course they can hire you, Kim, which we'll talk about later in the episode, but what can someone do on their own to sort of help with this? Hmm. Uh, if it's a place that they own or they want to buy, or is that what you're talking about? A place that they're in a lot, whether it's your house or mm. whether it's your place of work, some place where now you've heard this podcast, you go back, you do that internal test, and you're like, whoa, I do feel tense here. What can they do to help fix the space on their own without that um, deep sense of intuition? Be, oh, uh, besides calling me to get them cleaned up. Definitely they should call you. I think yeah. I need to call you. Yeah. One thing, one thing people can do, like if I think of all the basic things that everyone can do, one thing is get a bowl of salt and water, Epsom salt or sea salt, doesn't matter, and dissolve the, the salt and the water and just stick it somewhere it's not going to be knocked down on the floor, okay, somewhere in a corner or, or wherever, not near electrical things. Uh, and then watch the bowl because the salt will start to absorb. Now, if you notice that the salt, this is really wild, the salt crystallizes and starts to crawl out of the bowl, that's the energy trying to escape. So get the bowl, pour it down the toilet, wash it out, fresh salt, fresh water, put it back, and you keep doing that until it stops. Now, if it sits there for a month and there's no movement, the place is fine. So that's something you can do. If there's a lot of stress in the environment, say it's at work or whatever, or with the kids with studying for exams, uh, they can do that and that just helps the space to absorb. Mm -hmm. Second thing is a white candle, uh, is to put a white candle and ask God to bless the candle to clear the space and some of the energy will be absorbed by the candle. Now I say white because... When you use other colors, the different frequencies will attract different spirits. Mm. And some are not so nice. So it's very important that you just stick with the white candle. And it could be a like a tea light candle at Ikea or, you know, you get from Walgreens or whatever. It doesn't have to be anything special. Uh, and then, but the important thing is that once you, it burns out, you throw the container away, right? The mm. middle mm -hmm. tea light. And I'll give you an example of that because I did this house once uh, many years ago and I walked into the, the dining room and it was really dark. It didn't feel 
bad, but it was just, it was clearly dark room. Even though the, there was light coming in the window, it didn't have it. So I said, okay, God, what is causing this darkness? And I was directed to this candelabra with some beautiful white candles. But when I looked at it, it like had cobwebs on it and everything. And I go, wow, what's going on here? So I took the candelabra and took it out of the room and came back and the room was bright. And so, okay, so I went back and took the candelabra and put it back in the room and it got dark again. And I was like, this is amazing. So I, and this is before I could real like I was really feeling, I was just sensing what was happening in the space. So I asked the owners, when was the last time you lit these candles? And they said, oh, that was 15 years ago when we had our house warming. And I go, wow. So then I showed them and they could see the difference in the room just from moving the candelabra out. So the can, you know, it was a great experience. The house one was a fun thing, but it was so long ago, the energy was still sort of stuck. So it's important that if you don't light the candles for a long time, throw them out and get fresh ones mm. because the energy sits and especially the metal, right? The metal mm. containers for the tea lights, it collects energy. And so you're saying you need to burn it. You can't just set it there. You have to light the candle, right? Okay, okay. It only works when you light the candle and it starts to pull and absorb. And, of course, with the blessing, you're asking God to clean the space. Now, so that- I want to talk about that. Do you mind if we go to that really quickly? No. Yeah. Because I do not fancy myself religious. I, I think there is an element in me that's deeply spiritual. But what if you're not feeling spiritual or religious? Can you still tap into this or do you need that element? It's not, uh, for me, God is spiritual. God is not religion. For me, religion is man's way to reach out to God, mm-hmm. like to connect with God. Uh, God is love. You know, God is everywhere, spirit, great spirit, whatever you want to call God. Uh, so even people who don't believe in God, they might believe in, they, they believe in love, okay? Mm-hmm. So that's that, the great love of the universe or whatever is is. But it's also important that you're not calling on the universe because some people say, well, I ask the universe. And the reason I say it's important not to call the universe is because the universe has positive and negative. Mm. So when you call, who's coming? I've seen people working on the on a client and I'm looking at them and I can see a dark shadow behind them working and pulling energy off the client in a negative way. And I'm like, what? what are you doing? You're working with a spirit that's even lower frequency than you. And they said, well, I just asked the universe. Well, the universe sent you a, a bad one. So be careful who you ask for, right, where you're asking. And the client was feeling really dizzy and hurting their head because the, it was a negative situation, wasn't a positive healing. So it's important that you ask for God, the great spirit, the infinite love. Just go to your heart. Mm-hmm. And ask there, Even if you just, if you don't have a, a ritual or a ceremony or a relationship, it's just, going to your heart and just saying, just asking love to be there. Got it. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense, that universe thing. It's amazing. When I see people calling on the universe and I'm looking and there's like, it's like, remember the old cartoons of the devil and the angel on the shoulders? It's like that. It's like they all come. It's like, okay, who's going to, who's going to take it? Which one are they going to work with? Well, and with your intuition, I'm wondering if people ask me this all the time, and perhaps I'm sure you get asked this a lot, every space you go in or even on Zoom, you know, now that I see that a lot of your services are on Zoom, Mm -hmm. do you immediately pick up on that energy? Are you constantly taking it in? People ask me all the time, do you look at every space that you go in and dissect it and redesign it? So I'm wondering about that for you. So I had to learn to shut it off. Mm -hmm. Like right now I'm off. I'm switched off. And I had to learn because I remember there was a period of a couple of years where I couldn't go to a restaurant or a bar or go or movie theaters because I would feel everything. And I was going crazy. I was like, this is not, this is, this is insane. How can I live this way? And then I went to my spiritual teacher because you can't be a healer 24 hours a day. You've got to live in reality. So he taught me how to switch on and switch off. And so I have a whole ritual that prepares myself when I'm doing work and I only work a few days a month because obviously the energy is very taxing on my body. 
And so I'll pre- it takes me a couple of hours to warm up to get into that zone where I'm working. And then I can, it doesn't matter if it's Zoom, a photo, a live, doesn't matter. I'm in and I just go to work. And then I shut down off the, afterwards and I have a whole cleansing ritual for myself to clean myself up, up so I don't um, drag stuff around with me. Yeah. And, uh, and so, yeah, so there's a whole system of, of switching on and switching off. Otherwise, yeah, life would be pretty crazy. And it was for a couple of years. I do the same thing. I switch on and off. Yeah. So I, when people ask me, I absolutely do not assess every space. I'd be exhausted. Exactly. But I like this idea of thinking of a ritual around it because I really don't think of that. But you're right. That energy that I bring to designing a space is so intense. I can only do, you know, two clients a day, sometimes three, but I can only work certain days of the week. You know, they have to be days in which I'm not doing, going back to that strategic coach, they have to be focused days um, yes. when I'm not focusing on other energies because it really is a totally different capability. It is. Yeah. And also respecting yourself on what your capabilities are. Like it took me years to work out how many days I can work in a month and how many days I can work in a year, uh, in a week and how many days I can work in a row so that it didn't burn out because there was one stage back in 2000, 2003 where I went for three two weeks straight, was in Hong Kong, and I almost destroyed my career. I was so getting out of my body. It was really bad. And I it was the point where if I kept going, I would have burnt out. And it's a bit like frying all your electrical system in your house. You've got to pull all the wires out of the walls and read it. Well, you can't do that with your physical body. So it would have wiped me out for probably 10 years. And I've had friends who got burnt out and 10 years later they couldn't work. They just – and so this this experience of mine, it took me six weeks before I could work again. I was so – I was shaking wow. so bad. So it's very important to have that respect for yourself on how much you can give and how much you can take. So, yeah. And very- I think that really should translate to a lot of different fields, certainly not just space clearing or interior designing. But I think if we all looked inside us and, and evaluated the energy we bring to our zone of genius or our profession, and maybe if we protected it a little bit more, there'd be less burnout. I'm going to think about that, Kim. I think I need, I think I need to think about that a little bit. <laughs> I've been a little burnt out recently. Okay. Uh, Well, Kim, this has been such a valuable conversation. There's one thing I want to touch on a little bit more, and then then I want to hear where we can find you. But um, tell me a little bit more, this is just my personal curiosity, about ghosts. Because like I said, I do not believe in ghosts. However, I have seen several, I feel. I used to live in a pre-war apartment in the East Village in New York City, and I lived there with a folk singer. I was 21, just moved from college. She was 42 and had lived in the apartment for a long time. She went away on some kind of folk singing tour, right? Mm. And while she was gone, there was a guy in the rocking chair. Like, mm. and he was a soldier dressed up in garb. I had never seen a ghost in my life. I would come home from hanging out with my friends at the bar, just being mm. at work, and there would be someone in the corner. Like, and it wasn't a I wasn't afraid, which is strange because seeing a man in uniform in a rocking chair in your apartment should freak you out. It was just like he was there and I was there. But I was 21. I should have been a little more freaked out. Tell me about your thoughts about ghosts. So Are they real? What are they doing? They're real. Um, It's like people who've passed away, they didn't go to the other side. They got stuck. They got earthbound. So they didn't go through it. If you've ever seen that movie um, Ghosts with Patrick Swayze and Demi Moore, that's, a re- that's probably 95% true of what really happens. Okay, so it's a great you die, your spirit comes out of your body, and then if you don't go to the light or wherever, you're stuck and you're wandering around. And there's ghosts that are just lost. They're just wandering in and out everywhere and you see them and then you don't see them ever again. Then you see a different one. They're just free floaters. They float around everywhere. And then there's ones who are malicious, bad ones, who really start to mess with your life. Um, but, yeah, they're just people that passed away that got stuck and they didn't didn't go to the other side. They didn't go to through the tunnel or whatever it is. For but what if you have one in your space? Then you, who are you going to call? 
<laughs> Kim White. Yeah. But I mean, do you just learn to live with it? Do you just... Okay, it depends on the spirit. Like if you don't... This is something really important. If you feel fear and you didn't feel it before, check if it's your fear or it's the spirit's fear. This is something I learned. And when I learned this, I realized, oh, my God, I'm not, I was fine a minute ago. This is not my fear. This is the spirit's fear. And then I had all this compassion because I wanted to help the spirit. Instead of being afraid, thinking it's my fear, it was, it was not. And so having the compassion for the spirit is really good. But if you have a spirit in your house and you don't feel anything and it's not messing with your head or anything, it's fine. You know, just unless you really want to help them go to the other side, then you give me a call. But you can do that. You can send yeah. them on their way. Yep, that's what I do. I always send them to the light. So um, that's that's a bulk of my work when I'm doing properties. Wow. So, and some of them are stuck for a long time. They could be stuck to objects like furniture, or they can be stuck to uh, like the mirrors, or they're stuck in um, in just a space. Even though the building might have been renovated or or removed and a new building there, the spirit is still stuck. So they just need help to go to move on. And that's what I do. Interesting. So, well, yeah. I could talk to you all day, Kim. This stuff is <laughs> endlessly fascinating to me. I don't understand it, but I don't even know if I believe it, but I always feel it. Isn't that funny? Like I can say logically, I don't believe it. I can uh -huh. say physically, I don't actually see it but I'm always experiencing it. I can even tell when I leave a client space by my reaction, my body's reaction to being out of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It informs me on what was going on. Yeah. And sometimes I think, oh, well, I'm reacting to the energy of the client, but sometimes you truly feel it's the space. And there have been times I just wanted to look at the person in the eye and just say, you got to move. <laughs> you got to move. Yeah. I've had those strong reactions. So I just find this endlessly fascinating. I find you endlessly fascinating from the moment I met you in that quick Zoom room to today. Um, so tell people where they can find you. So people can reach me by going to my website, kimwhitecoaching.com, and all the links are there for my workshops and, and also for you know reaching out for a clearing of their home or their business. It's funny, you're just uh, thinking about the story of a, a football team that was having continuously injury problems and they called me in. I went in and I found in the boardroom of the club was a gift that was given to them and that was cursed. And so the gift was blocking the success and the team was at the bottom of the ladder, right? As soon as we removed it from the building, they went to number one. They won the like the Super Bowl. Uh, Do you think someone was sabotaging them with that yeah. gift? Yeah. 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 So people, I want to say to your listeners, if you if someone gives you a gift and you have a bad feeling about it, thank them for the gift, but don't keep the object. Mm. Because the object is what is the problem, not the gift. Some people do it uh, intentionally, unfortunately, and some people it's just they they thought it'd be great. They were buying with their eyes instead of their heart. So you thank him for the gift, but you don't keep the object in your home. Because most people say, well, I can't let, let him let go of it. What if they come and they don't see it, you know? So it's about honoring yourself and your space. That is so interesting. And I think just trusting that feeling, whether you logically believe it, whether you can logically see that it's negative, really checking in with yourself, that yes. mind-body connection. I'm excited. I think I've learned a lot. I'm going to be going. And I'm, going to, I'm going to share one real quick thing. I love to teach people who, when they go into a new home, apartment or whatever, to mop the tile floors with salt and water. And in the bathroom, put a little ammonia in there. Okay, make sure the windows are all open, of course, because of the fumes. But a little bit of ammonia with, with hot water and salt, mop the floor because that will cut a lot of the energy from previous tenants, especially in the bathroom and the toilets. Mm. Okay, but if the floor is fine, obviously not a, a beautiful wooden floor, you wouldn't use salt on it. But if the floor is fine to do it, that's a great way. Another way is for carpets and you just feel there's something right. You don't want to rip the carpet out. Get dry, like coarse sea salt 
sprinkle it over when you're going away for the weekend, you sprinkle it on the floor and you have the vacuum ready for when you come back. As soon as you get back, you vacuum all the salt up and throw out the vacuum bag or clean out the dice and whatever it is. And what that does, the salt absorbs the energy out of the carpet. And so this can help people to feel fresher in their new home. This is great stuff. Great stuff. Kim White, do you have a book? Because I want to buy it. I want to buy <laughs> I, this book. Yeah. I have quite a few books on Amazon. Unfortunately, none on space clearing yet, but it's in the works. And uh, so there is, uh, just go to Amazon. You'll see a bunch of books there. From oh, my goodness. Well, this has been such an amazing conversation. Thank you so much for joining me today. I know I got a page of notes out of this got a page of notes and a lot of great tools. And um, so thank you so much for being here. You're welcome. It was wonderful being here. Well, thanks. And we hope to have you again soon. In the meanwhile, check out Kim White at kimwhitecoaching.com. He has packages on there. You can click and buy even on Zoom, which I thought was so fascinating. And uh, I think I think we need to talk about my new home, Kim. There you go. Thanks. Bye. Bye. asked for it and we have answered the call. For years you've been saying, Betsy, you're talking about all these great design concepts, but we can't visualize them. You're describing the picture that the listener sent in of their problem and we wish we could see that picture too. After all, a picture is worth a thousand words and I do my best to describe them, but there's nothing like seeing it for yourself. And that's why Affordable Interior Design, the podcast, now has a YouTube channel. Not only do we have a YouTube channel where you could see recordings and clips of these podcast episodes, we also have an Instagram, a Facebook, and so many other exciting things. You should check it out. Head over to affordableinteriordesign.com slash links. Once again, affordableinteriordesign.com slash L-I-N-K-S links. And when you go there, you will see links to our YouTube page, our Instagram page, our Facebook page, and more. Please check it out, follow and subscribe so you can see everything I'm talking about. A big thank you to our amazing producer, Catherine Heller, to Aton and the MBCR House Band, and to Affordable Interior Design, the sponsor of this podcast and the premier place to get an amazing look on a budget. Check out affordableinteriordesign.com. If you guys love the show, the very best way to support us is by spreading the word. Tell your friends or write us an awesome review on iTunes. So until next week, guys, thanks so much for joining us, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.